you and I have both um, talked openly to each other about quitting percussion. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I wish I had a coffee. I, this interview feels, I feel naked because I don't have my... I don't have any coffee here. That's fine. Hey Doug. Hi Todd. At the end of your career, you're not voted into the PAS Hall of Fame. <laughs> Will you be upset? Doug, you and I uh, first met in what must have been 1998, I think. Uh, no, it was 90. If you must know, 90. Oh, no, you're right. Maybe fall 98. Fall 98. Fall 97. Spring, uh, spring 98 or spring fall 98. 97. Yep. As you recall, I was visiting the University of Cincinnati, and I was lucky enough to sit in an orchestra rehearsal where you were playing timpani. That's true. And do you remember what you did for me? I do. What'd you do? I came off of the stage and found you at the back of the concert hall, and I invited you to join me. What moved you to do that? I believe in community. I want to hate your setup, but I feel like you're... I think it's actually really great. And yeah, I, didn't put, I didn't put much thought into it at all. That's great. It organically, <laughs> it organically came together. This great. What's wrong with my setup? <laughs> What's wrong with your face? If you walked in and saw this, I think you'd be like, man. It's not even different than yours. It's the split. It's the split. It's that you're going a little Emerson like a Palmer or something with, uh, <laughs> with your, your keyboards. Okay. Now you getting a run are you gonna get a running start? I have no idea yet. Okay. It's good. Good. Looks real good. Oh, just one tambourine. Okay. You, oh, you use two? I do two tambos. How's your hair? So good. I feel great about my hair. Your hair does look good. I always feel good about it. I'm not bald like our friends. <laughs> Doug, you are a doer of big projects. Sometimes. Would you say that that is something that you fell into that kind of presented itself and you discovered you had a knack for it or that you kind of pushed into existence because you had big ideas and you wanted to do them? I mean, in some ways, like trying to make so happen, trying to make the world want to like a percussion quartet and then to like try to figure out how to make a percussion quartet work so that like your drummer friends have health insurance and bi-weekly salaries. It's like insane. It's like an insane idea and takes a lot of work. So then after that, um, things seemed easy. And then we started playing together. I was playing with a lot of people, but I had kind of time on my hands, uh, which all sort of oddly led me to agreeing to go to the tundra for no money to, to play percussion quartets. And then on the side of this mountain, I was playing drums to no one and realized I really liked to play crazy music. Um, or, or to play percussion music. If I'll go to the tundra to play for moose, and I really like this stuff. And then when I came back, uh, people started to know me as the guy who went to the tundra. So he must be kind of crazy. So then people started asking me to do weird things. And I said, yes. Um, and then from saying yes, it happened. And then I think it, it has since, in hindsight, there's a lot that I've come to. That's why I got the logistical muscle to do it. But it has come to be, it has become a calling to me for a lot of reasons, of some of which are because I was in, growing up, I would work in housing projects from when I was like 11 to 18 um, through a program my mom did. She's a social worker. I, I would help run day camps and housing projects in Pittsburgh uh, with some friends of mine from Philadelphia. And so it kind of gave me uh, the social justice bug and the idea. And that taught me how to sort of teach leadership and teach how to learn through doing things. So I always wanted to find a way to have that in my life and doing some big things for me is a lot, has a lot to do with a lot more than the music.
hypothetical situation. In this hand, I have uh, two tickets for a White Sox game, and they're free. And in this hand, I've got two tickets to a Cubs game, but you have to pay $100 for them. <laughs> I think if it's a weekend, if it's a Sunday afternoon, in the middle of the season, I might take the free tickets. I thought about it a lot, because we're, we're a Cubs family. I know. But my son is eight and barely likes baseball, <laughs> and he really likes that there's Dippin' Dots at White Sox games. But if you came to town, 100 bucks, Cubs game. You know, I've been to a Cubs game. Do you want to talk about it? It's a car course. <laughs> yeah, but scare me. They changed the game. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, you know that for nine months of my life, I was a, I was a Chicagoan. We still talk about it. <clears throat> and I think you also know of the episode I had one night in breaking into the Lincoln Park Zoo. I, I didn't think he'd bring that up. You weren't there, but if you were, would you have been my wingman? No. I'm far too Catholic to break into a zoo. <laughs> Gotta put Jessica in front of Meister oh, Absolutely, Eschen. yeah. Eschenbach. I was sure last time to make sure that... Nobody puts a baby in a corner. Nobody puts... Baby JJ in the corner. <laughs> Let's say you had a daughter and you have to pick one of the so guys for her to marry. <laughs> Good question. Wow. Um, um, it's tough. I don't know if it's tough. I feel like I would. I feel like I would have to go. Um, assuming they're single, I'm going to call him Eric Beach. We all know it's Eric Cha Beach, but I feel like if I was going to have a son-in-law, it's Beach every time. That's the right answer. Because like, you know, Adam like, he would eat a lot at Thanksgiving, <laughs> and Jason would just be weird, and then and then Josh. He's so much hair. I just wonder <laughs> what I would wonder about my daughter. But like, I feel like Eric would come home and. He would be super sweet. And be thoughtful. Yeah. There'd be thank you cards. Um, family gatherings would be... The family would look forward to Eric coming. Yeah. Well, and I, and I... You know, having said this about Adam, I would still want him to come. Like, I feel like then they're all in the family again. And like... Like please, the, brother, the brother... Everyone is... Bring your brother. Standing, standing invitation. Right, right. To Thanksgiving dinner. Right. But like, Eric is the one who would stay a little later. Right. Well, he might even, I'd probably like insist that he stays at my house. So everybody <laughs> right. else like go home. And then Eric and I would have to like, get another bottle of wine, Eric. Right. Come to the fire. Right. Let's yeah. talk. Yeah. I feel exactly the same way, I think. If you had a daughter, what member of Third Coast Percussion would you like to have here? Well, I mean, I, I don't know all the guys that well, and so I, I think I, I know Skidmore the best, and he's a Texan. I feel like for me, like Dave and, and Jason Trudeau are like the uncles. They would be more like, they'd be the fun, I, I picture them as fun uncles in my family. Right. And then, so maybe it would be like, Rob, or maybe like if I had two daughters, one would marry Beach, and then my younger daughter would marry Sean Connors. Okay. You can stick this. Yeah! How you doing? That's it. I think I quit so because um, I don't think I was ever put on the payroll. Like I, th I just think the paperwork didn't go through. Like did you submit? Was I put on payroll or? We didn't want to pay you. Okay. Jason and I were keeping most of the money. I mean, I definitely had one foot out the door, but. Well, um, we paid you as such. Right. 